Welcome back. We are still on the topic statistics. In the previous video, we learned how to find the mean from a grouped frequency distribution table. In this video, we are going to learn how to find the mean of a distribution by using the assumed mean method. Finding the mean using the assumed mean method. We can assume a mean for a given data and then calculate the actual mean from it. This method is usually used for a grouped frequency distribution. So in the assume mean method, we will assume a mean. It is usually given to you in the question. The assumed mean will usually be given to you in the question. And then you use the assumed mean to calculate the actual mean. If a mean A is assumed for a data, then the actual mean is equal to the assumed mean, which is A plus sigma FD divided by sigma F. D is the deviation and you obtain it by subtracting the assumed mean from the x values. The x values will be the class midpoints or the class mid values. And as we have seen, A is the assumed mean. The f values will be the frequencies. So when using the assumed mean method, the actual mean is equal to the assumed mean plus sigma fd divided by sigma f where d is the deviation and you get that by subtracting the assumed mean from the x values let's apply this to solve a question let's consider this question the table below shows the distribution of the masses of parcels in a local post office Using an assumed mean of 48 kilograms, calculate the mean mass. So here the assumed mean we are going to use is 48 kilograms. We will draw a table with five columns. The class intervals will be in the first column and then the frequencies will be in the second column. Now, these are the values that were given to us in the table. So, in the table, we have the masses, that's the intervals, and then we have the frequencies. So, that is what we have here. So, these are the masses or the class intervals, and then these will be the frequencies. We are using the assumed mean method, and the formula is the mean is equal to the assumed mean plus sigma fd divided by sigma f the next column here will be for the x values that is the class midpoints or the class mid values after getting the x values we'll be able to get the d values which is the deviation and the last one will be the fd because after getting the d values we have the f values here so you can find fd which will be a product of the f values and the d values let's begin by finding the class midpoints or the class mid values we will get them by adding the lower class limit to the upper class limit and dividing the result by two so for the first one we have 20 plus 24 divided by 2 that will give us 22 the next one will be 25 plus 29 divided by 2 which is 27 the next one is 30 plus 34 divided by 2 that will be 32 the next one is 35 plus 39 divided by 2 that is 37 the next one is 40 plus 44 divided by 2 that will be 42 the next one is 45 plus 49 divided by 2 that's 47 the next one is 50 plus 54 divided by 2 that's 52 and the last one is 55 plus 59 divided by 2 that's 57 so we now have the class midpoints or the mid values which will give us the x values 
The next thing we have to do is to find the deviation. Remember, we are using an assumed mean of 42. And we said the deviation will be equal to x minus a. So to get the first deviation, we will subtract the assumed mean a from the first x value. The first x value is 22. The assumed mean is 42. So d will be equal to 22 minus 42, which will give us negative 20. The next d value will be 27 minus the assumed mean, which is 42. And that will give us negative 15. The next one will be 32 minus 42, which is negative 10. The next one will be 37 minus 42, which is negative 5. The next one is 42 minus 42, which is 0. Then we have 47 minus 42, which is 5. The next one is 52 minus 42, which is 10. And the last one is 57 minus 42, which is 15. We now have the D values here. We have the F values here, so we can find FD. We'll get that by multiplying the F values by the D values. So the first one will be 2 times negative 20. That's negative 40. The next one will be 3 times negative 15. That will be negative 45. The next one is 7 times negative 10, which is negative 70. The next one is 26 times negative 5, which is negative 130. The next one is 29 times 0, which is 0. The next one is 25 times 5, which is 125. The next one is 6 times 10, which is 60. And the last one is 2 times 15, which is 30. So we have been able to find the FD values. From the formula, we need sigma FD. So you add all the FD values. When we add all of them together, we are going to get negative 70. So sigma FD is giving us negative 70. From the formula, you can see that we need sigma F. So you add all the F values also. And that is giving us 100. So now we have the assumed mean to be 42. We have sigma FD to be negative 70. And we have sigma F to be 100. So we can find the mean. The mean will be equal to the assumed mean, which is 42, plus sigma FD, which is negative 70, divided by sigma F, which is 100. And this will give us 41.3. So it means that the mean mass is 41.3 kilograms. Let's consider the next question. The following is a record of marks obtained by a group of 50 students in a chemistry test that was scored over 100. Draw a frequency distribution table for the data using the interval 0 to 9, 10 to 19, etc. And using an assumed mean mark of 60%, calculate the mean. So here we are going to use an assumed mean of 60% to calculate the mean. We have raw data here, so it means that in our frequency distribution table, we are going to have a tally. I've already explained how to do that in the previous videos, so I'm sure that by this time you know how to do that already. So let's go ahead with the other part of the solution. We are going to find the mean using the assumed mean method. We know that the formula is the assumed mean plus sigma FD divided by sigma F. So we have a table with six columns. The first one containing the class intervals. The next one will contain the tally. The next one will be the frequency, which will give us the F values. The next one will be the class midpoints or the class mid values. Then the next one will be for the deviation, and the last one will be the FD values. I'm sure that by this time you already know how to do the tally. When you do the tally for the data we have, this is what you are going to get, and this will be the frequencies from the tally. 
let's find the class midpoints or the mid values which will give us the x values to get that we will add the lower class limits to the upper class limit and divide the results by 2 so the first one will be 0 plus 9 divided by 2 that will be 4.5 when you do that for the next one you are going to have 14.5 the one after that will be 24.5 the one after that is 30 to 39, so 30 plus 39 divided by 2, and that will be 34.5. The next one will be 44.5, the next one is 54.5, 64.5, 74.5, 84.5, and 94.5. These will give us the x values. Now we can find the deviation. Remember, we are using an assumed mean of 60. And to get the deviation, we will subtract the assumed mean from the x values. These are the x values, so you subtract 60 from each one of these. So the first one will be 4.5 minus 60. That will give us negative 55.5. The next one is 14.5 minus 60. And that will give us negative 45.5. The next one is 24.5 minus 60. That is negative 35.5. The next one is 34.5 minus 60. That will give us negative 25.5. The next one is 44.5 minus 60, which is negative 15.5. The next one is 54.5 minus 60, which is negative 5.5. The next one is 64.5 minus 60, and that is 4.5. We have 74.5 minus 60, that is 14.5, 84.5 minus 60 is 24.5, and the last one is 94.5 minus 60, that will give us 34.5. So we now have the D values, we already have the F values here. So to get the F D values, we will multiply the F values by the D values. So the first one will be 4 times negative 55.5. That will be negative 222. The next one will be 4 times negative 45.5. That will be negative 182. The next one is 6 times negative 35.5. That is negative 213. We have 6 times negative 25.5. That is negative 153. 8 times negative 15.5, that is negative 124. 5 times negative 5.5, that is negative 27.5. 6 times 4.5 is 27. 4 times 14.5 is 58. 4 times 24.5 is 98. And 3 times 34.5 is 103.5 we have the fd values so we can now find sigma fd so we add all of them when we add all of them we are going to have negative 635 so sigma fd is negative 635 we need sigma f so we add all the f values when you add them we are going to have 50 the assumed mean is 60, so we can substitute that information here to get the mean. And this will give us 60 plus negative 635 divided by 50. And that will give us 47.3. So it means that the mean mark is 47.3%. Thank you for watching this video. Subscribe to this channel for more videos. In the next video, we will move on to another measure of central tendency, which is the mode. We will learn how to find the mode of a distribution. Bye-bye.